Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. First thing I'd like to do today is I'd like to read you a little quote. This is from the Neyu, which is uh, means inner training, and it's uh, it's possibly the oldest Taoist document that we've got. It goes back many hundreds of years below um, before uh, uh, the Common Era, but uh, uh, the this one kind of struck me because it fits in with a lot of what we're doing and. Uh, just a short one, but it says, when your body is not aligned, the inner power will not come. When you're not tranquil within, your mind will not be well ordered. Align your body, assist your inner power, then it will gradually come on its own. I thought that was kind of like spot on for what, uh, for what it is we're trying to do. That is, we, we try to get this body, mind, spirit integration. And if the body is out of alignment, then this creates challenges for the mind. It's disruptive. It creates a non-coherence in the mind. So it is a something that we, we work at getting this alignment. And so that the inner power, which in this case, you know, uh, that, that, uh, well, the inner power, the, uh, so the, the, uh, this uh, can apply to stillness meditation, where you try to get everything aligned so that you can then move into a deep state of, of uh, heightened awareness. Uh, but it, I think it applies even more to moving meditation or the, all the stuff that we're doing, all the internal training we're doing. And particularly apropos of central equilibrium, because that establishes this, this really profound link between the earth and, and the heavens. And if it's off, then we need a whole lot of extra effort there to try to get things ordered. Whereas if we get, are in the state of central equilibrium, that inner power, can then um, can then come forth. It, it's something that that is you're a, you're able to tap into the big chi at that point. So uh, and the other thing is beyond that, if your your alignments are correct, then you also are able to efficiently move and circulate the energy within within the body mind. So the place I like to focus today is the, uh, I like to focus on stepping. It's something we talk about a bit, but I can take it a little bit deeper because it's one of those things that, um, you know, use it or lose it. And if um, we don't step, if we don't align correctly, then we start to accumulate a lot of uh, a lot of baggage in the in the system. We get a lot of we get a lot of misprogramming, which then interferes long term over our uh, our energy state. But it also creates opportunities for injury, for excessive wear on the joints, and excessive um, damage to muscles and nerves. I mean, when you think of like say sciatica, which generally comes from some sort of misalignment you know there's it creates intense pain that affects you and uh, you feel it in your hip and then down your leg and and that comes from a rubbing against the sciatic nerve or some impingement on the sciatic nerve and so if we get that aligned correctly then we can remove that uh, the irritant that can be a, a major distraction to our to getting into that state of um, body, mind, spirit integration that we uh, we like so much. So, um, starting with this this idea of the uh, 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 with stepping, it from my observations, most people kind of try to figure this out, you know, from their uh, on their own from the time they're you know about a year old. 
and very seldom do they actually go back and really look at it from a uh, uh, a detailed perspective, a, an efficiency perspective to see what am I doing and is it the most uh, effective way to go. So through the years, I've talked about you know the alignment of the foot with the knee and the quad. So the quad being the hip joint, and if we can get those three in alignment, then then we can have a stable state, uh, a stable uh, foundation, which then allows the upper body to relax and to then be able to feel that inner power going through the whole system. And you can, uh, you can do cool stuff with that. And for each of us, particularly people my age or older, and I'm not talking specifically to the people who are, uh, you know, sitting here, I'm talking to if people who are tuning in on YouTube. Also the, the idea if, if we, um, if we do not attend to this, when you get to be my age and you, uh, it will have a tendency to just move, move more and more in the, in the direction of frailty, because most people's solution to, to this problem is to kind of create safe behaviors that prevent you from endangering yourself. So like the, uh, the fear of falling is uh, it's one of those things that some psychologists say that it's intrinsic to all all humans that it's one of those things that is kind of built into the organism i don't it's that seems right to me it seems to me that there's a that's something that even if you are apparently fearless by comparison like say a skateboarder who is doing quadruple somersaults uh, you know 30 feet above the ground, there is still an awareness there of your limitations. Your body might be still giving you signals like, uh-oh, we can't go there. Otherwise, bad things are going to happen. So they, so there is still, get, you're getting a lot of feedback from your proprioceptive system as you're doing that. For most of us who are not executing those kind of maneuvers, even the slightest movement off of center can cause a, a response, a tensing up in order to prevent that from happening. And you see this in push hands a lot where you just, just kind of move someone just, just a little bit off their, off their center and their, their immediate reaction is to tense up. And so we want to be able to get so familiar with that response and be able to build a structure that that is um, fault tolerant. That is, you're able to uh, experience a wide range of energies and movements without uh, it being disastrous, without it being you know, a, a, a bad experience. And so we, we want to build from the from the ground up. And it's something that that I'm encouraging people to really take a look at because the solution of just limiting your behaviors so that you are not doing anything which challenges you is uh, safe in the short run, bad in the long run, because the more you limit your behavior, the less you are able to deal with novelty when it comes up, less you're able to like respond to uh, an emergency, you know, that banana peel that suddenly appeared on the uh, on the kitchen floor and your ability to to deal with that kind of stuff is limited and you also tend to as you get as you reduce your participation in life you get your energy field gets smaller your muscles become more um, uh, atrophied so there's a, you're, you're kind of moving in the direction of decrepitude if that is your strategy. I'm suggesting a, a different strategy, which is to challenge yourself each day to do a little more, and but to do it from a base of uh, a basis of knowledge, a basis of of principles that I'm going to share with you that that help you to orient and create that fault tolerant system that is responsive to change 
and you're able to do cool stuff. And then you're allowed to gradually expand your participation in life. And you are not as worried about bad stuff happening. So uh, that's a long preamble, but uh, going forward. So we want to get it. So the idea is the more we can get closer to central equilibrium, that is closer to the center line, as our organizing principle, we start to fulfill that idea that, you know, that was stated thousands of years ago, that, you know, we get this alignment, which then allows the, the inner energy, the, the, the chi, the big chi to move through you and to be able to access that inner power. And um, there are two factors here that I would like to, to say. One is that, that orienting to the, the central equilibrium, that is the closer you can have, have a knowledge of your center and the closer you can get to hewing to that center, that center line, it gives you a point of orientation and then you can move around that center. The other the second point is energetic coherence. That is that bringing the whole body mind together as a unit has an effect on your fault tolerance. That is you are able, whenever you address the problem strictly from a waist down kind of approach, you're, you're severely limited in in the uh, effectiveness of that of that strategy whereas if you can get the whole body to cooperate because it is a whole body thing so that your left hand knows what your right foot is doing then you're able to respond to these things much faster and much more effectively so the uh the principle let me just show give you i'll give you a visual aid here to uh up with this. I got a big stick here. And uh, so what I want to do is this is, yeah, I want to align my central equilibrium. So if my weight is approximately 50-50, this, this, this is my center line. It's going to be right down, right down there. If I move into my right foot, if I want to settle into that, then this no longer describes my center line. I got to shift my awareness so that, ah, here I am. And I want to get it so that I can align my stuff over here. And getting from here, same thing over here. Well, oh, I want to get over here. And then I have to do that. The easy solution and the one we favor tend to is just, oh, I'll just shift my push my butt to the side and that will solve the problem. It doesn't, it, it, it creates a, an imbalance here because most of my, my junk is outside my foot. And so then I'm having to work really hard to get that, get that established. I want to, if I want to move into my right leg, say, I want to establish my central equilibrium over the inside of my right foot, so that I, whenever I, I'm going to release my claw and spiral down, so that I'm keeping my center right there, even though my weight is primarily in my right foot. So I want to spiral down and, oh, I'm, I'm pivoting around this, this center pole. Okay, so then if I if I go in here, I can I'm able to move and be centered in that in that structure. So the the game here is to be able to anchor with the inside of the foot. Because if I go to the outside of my foot, if that's where my my center is, then you can see that a whole bunch of me is way outside of my base. And then that creates a creates a problem. So I want to I want to get it so that I'm spiraling down this way. Okay. So we want to we 
want to be able to do that. So the exercise that we've uh, we've done, you know, many times in this class has been to to really just focus on that, and that's something we'll be doing in a minute. And uh, but the other thing is we want to be able to have our central or have our energetic coherence to go on with that. So that means so. Whereas I want to put some attention on the stuff that's happening below my belt, but I also want to connect it up to my arms, my hands, my fingers. I want to be able to get that, get that all connected up. So if I can do that, if I have, if I'm extending out as I spiral down, then this enables me to make this into a whole body connection rather than just something I'm doing with my, with my legs. So the, uh, um, so we're going to be doing some, uh, some exercises here, uh, including one that is, uh, some of you may find a little challenging and I encourage you to do it anyway. Um, cause even if you do it in an abbreviated way and you do it, um, you don't do it as often, it's one of those things that enables you to enhance your range of participation in life. The more you can get your legs, your joints, rehabilitate those, the more you're, you're then you're able to, going forward, you're able to, uh, to uh, to do more so that you know, in five years you're doing much more than you are doing now particularly whenever you know you're past your three score and ten there's a tendency to want to do, you know to expect to do less 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 as you move closer and closer to the uh, to the end there but we're saying no no we're going to go the opposite direction we want to actually expand our participation our range of activities as we go forward. And so this is something that may be of assistance with that. This one exercise I'm gonna be showing you uh, is uh, one way of, of, of approaching it. We'll, we'll have others as well, but this is a uh, uh, one thing to do. So why don't you uh, stand up and uh, first we're just going to, uh, we're going to do that simple exercise so you you want your uh, actually put your right foot forward. So we're automatically we're setting up that central pillar over the right foot. Okay. So as I feel the ball, I feel the ball of my right foot, and then set my knee. So I'm, my knee is not moving. I'm going to release and spiral down. And notice that I'm still right there centered over that pole, right? That center pole is, is, um, is my guide. And when I have that, that guide, it, that's a, that's a point of reference. That's my, that's my true north. And so then I can, when, Whenever I ah something happens, I have that to go to. I right? like okay, I know I know how to get back to center. So uh, so let's uh, pick up your left heel. So you're centering over the inside of your foot. You set the knee so that the knee's not moving. I know for some of you this is a review, and please bear with me. At uh, uh, some people it's new too, so we want to want to get that too. And, uh, Whenever you, we start off by kind of reversing a, our, our habit, which is to kind of push away from the earth. We want to, we're actually learning to go down. So we want to push away from the earth as a way of controlling that. And then, oh, we're going to spiral down. And notice how I'm keeping to that center line as I turn. The knee is not moving, right? So I'm keeping my weight over, over the uh, inside of my foot. And a bit, I, I, in the past, I've talked about doing it with the ball of the foot. You can actually do it with the heel too, but it, the important thing is getting your 
central equilibrium. So notice how we're spiraled down here, we're, we're, we're centered up. And so then without coming up, you want to turn without moving the knee. And then you turn back without moving the knee. So you want to just release that quad, release that hip joint, and really feel into the ball of the foot. Don't push the knee out too much. So if you'll notice, my knee is, is just slightly forward of vertical, right? A lot of people, they say, oh, go to the quad. So they, they, what they do is they immediately push the knee out, which creates a lot of strain in the knee. We don't want that. We want, we want the, so if it helps to put your weight in your heel, but feel it on the inside of the foot, that, that might be, uh, that might be a, a way of, of helping to keep from uh, the, uh, the knee pushing up too far, but you want to spiral down and turn. You get that. Now go to your back foot. Feel the, let's, let's just do it from the heel just for, uh, for grins here. So your knee is just unlocked. It's not, it's not very bent at all. And you want to still keep that, that weight on the inside of the foot so that when you push away, you're going to spiral down and turn. And I don't care if you've done this exercise a thousand times, there's still something to be learned from it each time you do it. It's a very powerful thing and something that I get something new every time I do it. Because that releasing the claw, releasing the muscles that, that hold your hip really tight, that's not something that comes easily or naturally to most people. It's something that you have to, you have to work at. So then put your left foot forward and pick up your right heel and push away and sink into that heel of your left foot, set the knee and push away and then spiral down and turn. Keeping that center, keeping the weight on the inside of the foot So this is the easy part right now. And so bear with me with that. So let's add in some, some hands with that too. So we can fulfill the other condition I was saying there, which is you want to get that, that whole body connection. So point your index fingers, reach out with that, and extend your arms as you do that. And notice how that has an effect on your balance, on your ability, your confidence and your ability to hold your position. Now go to your back foot, feel the heel, set the knee, push away, reach out, and ah, spiral down. You're releasing at the quad, keeping that center pull. So this, this review is is going to be it's going to help you with uh, what we're doing next because uh, as I said it's a little more challenging, but I think it's well worth your uh, time exploring it. Good. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Now. Um, you know, be a little wider than hip width. And I want you to point your next fingers, feel that, feel, then feel your fingertips, right? Feel that, feel like you got some claws there at your fingernails. And then reach with the, reach with your wrists and very slowly come up. Your elbows are bent. And just reach up till your arms come up about chest height. You're reaching out. So you're now, so the notice that the wrists are bent and your hands are rounded. You're opening the chest. Good. And then bring your elbows down, bend your wrists up and then hands come down. Good. Now I'd like you to do it without, um, uh, bending the wrist this time to so bring your arms up and just feel the difference and reaching out 
with your arms straight, with your hands straight. Notice that it creates more, requires more effort at the shoulders to make that happen. Now bring your elbows down and float that down. Good. Now, feel your fingernails again. This time reach with the wrists. And notice how the arms just kind of float up by comparison. Your elbows are dropped, your wrists are bent, your fingers are, are rounded, and you're, ah, you're extending outward, but it requires a lot less effort at your shoulder joints to make that happen. Now, there's an exercise that we can do with this, but we're not going to do that now because we got other fish to fry. So coming down, and I just want to get the idea there. So when we're bringing the arms up, you're reaching with the wrist. The fingers, fingers are hanging as they go up, and then ah, uh, you reach out. Okay. So we get that. Uh, Okay, so uh, let me see. I guess any questions, anybody so far before we go further? Just let me know if anybody has, uh, has any questions or issues. No, we're good. All right, so let's, uh, we're now going to do a, an eagle meditation. And this is something, it's not the, the whole form that I learned, but it's, I modified it something that we can we can share in in this group over over Zoom, and uh, we may do more. But the important thing is to, to get the uh, uh, the ability to step and the ability to control your your qual. So, um, so actually, before that, let's just do some stepping. So we're going to. You're going to feel the ball of your right foot. You're going to set the right knee. Push away and then spiral down and to the right. So you're loading up that right claw and feel your left heel coming up. And then come up a little bit into your right leg and then down. Sink that down. Now reach out and coming up. And down, so that you feel that that left foot is really empty. Because you're going to pick that up and make a step with that, an empty step. Notice that reaching out with your arms like this helps with that making that step. Now feel the feel the left foot, set the left knee. And you're going to ah spiral down into the left claw and pick up the right heel. Push away, stand up, and ah sink down. So loading up that you want to feel that center line and pick up your right foot and place that out. Empty step. And feel the right foot, set the right knee, and uh, spiraling down into the claw. Notice I'm not pushing my butt out to the side. I'm just spiraling down and step up and step to the side. Step in, step to the side, step in, step to the side. So notice that you're gaining control over that standing on one leg. Feel the, feel the left foot set the left knee and you're spiraling down and then you're stepping in with the right foot. Feel that sink, feel that, get to that confidence stepping in, stepping out, stepping in, stepping out and back to center.
to just pause a moment and feel into your body mind and feel the effect that that's having on the chi circulating as you're connecting up the whole system and to the degree that you're doing it with central equilibrium that inner power is filling your body okay now let's let's do an eagle and we're not going to be doing much stepping with this but it there'll be there'll be some so the the uh, um I'm going to do it facing you to, to begin, and then we'll uh, um, then we'll then I'll turn around, and you can follow me. So let's step out with your left foot. Actually, step back in, and I want you to step forward with your left foot. And bring, reach with your wrist. Relax your, drop your elbows and relax your shoulders. As you're re reaching with the wrist, you're extending though. With the wrist, it's not limp. It's, there's, you're allowing that inner power to reach out there. So your wrists come up and now reach. Your fingers are rounded. You've got those eagle talons now on those on your arms. You're reaching out there. Now sink into your back leg, and as you do that, you reach up with your wrists. Sink down and then coming up. Your fingers come up and oh, you're flapping down. And sink and reach. And flapping down. Now go into your left foot. Sink. Reach. Flapping down. Sink a little deeper. And mm, feel that extension all the way to your wingtips there. And empty step forward with your right foot. And sink. Yeah. Up. And sink. Reach with those wrists. Feel that extension. Hang there a moment. Feel where in your foot you're taking the force, the weight. Feel it. Feel the load. Feel that power connection extending all the way through your arms to your fingertips. Now sink into your right foot. And mm, coming up. And sink. up and sink a little deeper and up and then step up and bring your arms down
I just feel into all the activity that's going on in your body right now. We're connecting up the whole system. Everybody's everybody's on the same page. And it's plugged into the big chi. So that inner power is circulating throughout the whole system. And it's also easy whenever you have this much going on. It's easier to see when you've got a kink in the hose. Easier to see where something is not aligned. Something that needs work. But particularly feel the power in your hands and your arms. Feel, feel the blood circulating. And then step in. Into the balls of your feet, gather. And sink into your heels and ah, sink into the yin. Empty out. Notice that you still have structure. You're still standing up. The yin part is the energy. The, the path of the energy is in and down instead of up and out with the yang chi. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna turn my back to you now and we will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you as, as I'm going along and follow along. You see what, what, uh, what we're looking for with this. And as we get deeper into the eagle meditation, you, there's much more of a intensity to the, you know, the embodiment of the, of the animal that comes along with that. But right now we're just, this beginning steps. We're just learning how to step. So we're, uh, we're uh, taking it nice and slow. All right, so here we go. So this one, we're actually gonna begin facing. So if I'm uh, facing to your left, And um, so I think when we do it this way, it's going to be so that we get the, we're all on the same page here, but let's, let's find out. So your hands come up, sink into the balls of your feet coming up with your hands, up to chest height, reaching out, feel those claws. Feel the talons you have there. Good. Now, turn to your left. Pivot on your left foot. So reach. Um, Pull back with your hands as your body goes forward. And then reach forward with your hands as your body goes backward. Do that again. Pull back with your claws, with your talons as your body moves forward. And back. Reach out. And then open, reach with your elbows, your wrists. Elbows are dropped, reaching up with the wrists. Feel those talons. Yeah. 
Sink into your right foot and your arms go up. Reach up with your wrists and up. Hands come down. Notice that the fingers come up. You're flapping those wings as you're coming up and then sink. Reach up with the wrists. And then sink into your left foot and coming up, reaching down. Yeah, sink into that left quad as you reach up with the wrists. Feel those feet, those talons. And then come up on the, uh, bring the right foot up and down with the flapping down, coming up and sink into your left leg. Wrist come up and step forward with your right foot and coming, reaching up with your wrist. As you sink and down as you come up and sink as you flap up and down. Into the right foot. Sink as your hands come up and down. Up and down. And sink into your right foot. Step up with your left. And step forward with your left foot. And sink into your left. And as you do that, the right hand comes up higher the right than the left. So your, your body has a, a, a bit of an angle to it. And you sink into your back foot, your right foot, and flap down. And up. And sink into your left foot and flap and come up. And come up with your left, flap down. Up and step forward with your right foot and sink and flap down as you come up, sink and sink into your left foot and down. Body comes up. Sink into your left and arms come up into your right. Body comes up, arms down. Good. And step in. Hands come down. Feel into the stillness. Feel the motion and stillness. Step in, bring your weight into your heels and feel into the yin. Feel into the stillness. 
Feel the inner power that comes from the alignment. Sink into the balls of your feet. Arms come up. Gathering young, expansive pause and really feel into that. That expansiveness and now sink into your heels and ah. Uh, in, throw the chi away. And pause and feel into the emptiness. Please have a seat. How'd that go? One yes, one no. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> it seems lately, and it was particularly um, vivid in this dance, this eagle form, or flapping of the wings, there's much more a sense of that steel wrapped in cotton. Um, the inner, it, I feel this particularly in my arms. I'm waiting to feel, get that feeling in my legs. Um, but it's very dense in the center and strong. It feels very strong. And particularly tonight, my skin was I didn't look at my arms, but it, it almost felt like it was glowing. It was so light. Um, so I, I don't know why that's happening right now. Maybe it's because we've been, you know, doing other movements similar to this. Um, but uh, it was really strong tonight. So good. I liked it. Great. Well, we have been doing stuff like that. We've been basically reclaiming lost territory in our arms and our upper bodies and our chest and, and shoulders and opening up the meridians so that you know, we're that chi is is flowing a lot more vividly than uh than before so yeah it, it it's not surprising that it's happening it you know it's really cool that you're perceiving it as as a glow because that's uh you know that that that's really cool so yes thank you for sharing that jonathan yeah it's such an interesting contrast to like the bear right i mean it's like this emphasis on up 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 even when we're sinking down and then when i think of when food can, you know when we do the bear we're like really sinking when we go down it's almost right. as if they're like two perfectly contrasting forms, but there's something about, about this subtle upward energy that you, you're sending to the whole system, not just the wrist and the lifting there, that sense of, which is really kind of cool. Beautiful. And, and, and when I think of it with the bear, they, they really ought to be done together. And then you get the yang form, it feels like more yang form, the bear's a more yin form or something. 
company. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, the it, uh, um, actually, I think the I would consider that the eagle is more young, and the bear is more mm -hmm. yin. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the, yeah. That's right. The, the end, that's exactly what I'm saying. The, it's one expanding up, and the and the bear is really, but they make a really good contrast. They do because they when do. we sink, when we sink with the eagle, we're we're just not sinking the way we do with a bear. We're not, right. you know, which you might think, well, gee, we're not getting enough root, but that's that's not what it's about somehow, right? I mean, it's like, oh, well, I could sink more, but that's then it's not the eagle anymore. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 an interesting way to think of. Yin, yang and yin in this this sort of up and down way yeah no that's, that's that's really good observation a few weeks ago we did a thing you know i talked about the uh the chi must be light and lively and, um, right. and the movements this are light and, not the chi but the movements are light and lively and this is uh, it, it doesn't get much more light and lively than than the eagle that that screen is flashing on me. You want to juggle something there? Okay. I mean, at, at the risk of pointing out the obvious, the eagle is a creature of air, and the bear is definitely <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, so true. Oh, what, it faded again. Damn. Um, but to feel that, right? Yeah. To, to feel oh. the bear is, is in opposition to the eagle is really cool. Are you seeing a picture? I see a picture now. Thank you. Uh, little technical difficulties there. So yes. So definitely, why we why we access is easy to visualize. You know those energies whenever we have these um, these embodiments of of, of the chi in, the, in that way. So it uh, those qualities you know come come for easy to visualize that and like ah that, that eagle having that that you know wide wingspan and and opening the chest opening the shoulders it uh, it feels uh, very expansive and and light and lively oh flashed off again sorry um valerie okay so what suddenly came to mind um well a couple of things first was i really wanted to keep doing the side, you know, lifting one side and the other, the other wing going down. But what just came to mind is if you think about, <clears throat> most of us have seen Native American dancing where they're waving, you know, they've got the um, wings on yes. their arms, the feathers, the feathers, and they are, they're, they're doing, they're doing this. They're doing this. Right. They're embodying that, that energy. Absolutely. Scott. Um, it's rather creepy how often you answer the questions that I was going to ask, but don't. Or Because I, I noticed this morning when I was doing my form that uh, something you said, you know, a while ago, you know, that you should be able to, you know, stop anywhere when you're doing the form, you should be able to stop anywhere and be rooted, right? So I've been, you know, when I do my form, I you know I, I figure if I can do that, if I can stop in the middle of a step or whatever and be rooted, that I'm probably you know on the right track, right? So that's what I've been doing. And I real and recently I realized that what I wasn't doing enough was connecting the arms, which is what you just you know said. And the other thing that I discovered was that if I was using my tail, if I use my tail, it helped. Which the tail, what the tail is actually doing is getting me on my center line. Nice. So it's really kind of funny. I came to a lot of this on my own, but um, this was, you know, very helpful. Nice. Um, yeah, what Bella was saying about, you know, when you don't want, and you know, one side and the other, you know, you're banking, right? That's what you're doing. You're banking like a bird. And man, that you could really, you know, I could really feel the bank. It was like, wow, this, you know, you could almost feel the wind under my arm, you know, under my wings. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, so I definitely got the the eagle was I mean was having a hard time with the steps because couldn't see your feet very well, but I still got the um, still got the spirit of the eagle there, which was really very cool. Beautiful, Sharon. Well, I have I got something that has nothing to do with today's lesson, 
um, for myself today about reaching with the elbow, I realized I could reach back. I've always been reaching out from my body. And I'll, and just, just thinking about reaching back a little bit, it changed, it changed everything in my arm. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, just can you talk a little more about that? I'm I'm, I'm curious. It, it 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 released um feeling the buildup of tension. And then if I could just for wherever I was at, you know, like pretending I was reaching behind myself. And that was enough to relieve the the upper tension and then bring the attention back to the wrist. And then I was floating away. Um, in the past, what I've done, I think I've tried to reach always out, you know, right out to the sides. And that just doesn't do it for me. Um, nice. So, so I, that 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 release release your shoulders whenever you did that yeah beautiful beautiful yeah that's great scott yeah i just um i guess i was doing what sharon was talking about and didn't realize it but yeah when you do that when you know when we were reaching down we were also reaching back it gives you it really gives you that the whole connects up the whole thing like you're flying right the whole wing all the way across, even across your chest, it just—it's like a bird does, right? They're they're all connected. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Sharon. It's helpful. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. It's been great. Oh, all right, all right. Well, oh, one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> okay. Um, I've said this before. Um, I have dry eye, but I think I have dry eye no more. The more that um, I'm working with my arms in this fashion and opening up those meridians, I, I have liquid <laughs> coming out of my eyes that for the very long time has not been happening. So there's a lot of whole lot of benefits <laughs> to all of this stuff besides wow. just the the energy moving i mean besides just the energy moving i mean this is physical proof actual you know i could go to my doctor and he's going to be amazed the next time he sees me my ophthalmologist he is going to be like what are you doing what are you doing we're going to bottle this you know don't expect too much of they they don't like their paradigm they don't like their paradigm rocks at all. No, no he's, he's, he's receptive to some of this stuff. He'll look at me a little with his head tilted, and then he'll reach his arm out. <laughs> you know, so he'll hear me. He may take it with a tiny, tiny grain of salt, but proof, just proof. Well, uh, that, that, that's, that's really interesting because it's something that I, I mentioned my, when I started introducing this stuff a few weeks back. I was saying how, how the, uh, the triple warmer uh, goes up the outside of the arm and then it connects to the to the eye and uh, and whenever we open that meridian then uh, good stuff may happen so wonderful good I, I love I love thank you that that, that gives us all hope <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I noticed that my eyes tend to be dry but right now they're very very moist, so so uh, uh, yes, that, that that's interesting. Great. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank and you, Maria. Maria. Thanks, Bye -bye. everyone. Love you guys. Love you all. Love you.